Welcome back to my channel if you've been here before or welcome to it for the first time if you are new. I'm Marissa um, and today we're going to be talking all about how to build your own infrared sauna. If you've looked into building infrared saunas, you've looked into purchasing infrared saunas, they're so expensive. I found ones ranging pretty much from like 2,500 to 7,000, you know, for like the whole rooms and all that stuff. And honestly, I'm just not in a position to drop that kind of cash. So I really wanted to film this video for you guys because a friend of mine made her own sauna and she was sharing all of those tips with me. So the sauna that um, I'm building today is an infrared sauna and more specifically it is a near infrared sauna and I'm not really gonna get into like all of the science behind infrared saunas but I do have a video talking all about detox that I'll link and you can check that out if you're interested in learning more on that side of things but today keeping it pretty surface level and just showing you how to make one I'm building a near infrared sauna because I'm using it really for recovery and detoxing from my Lyme disease I need the maximum cellular detox that's possible but they're great for really anybody you know my partner uses it to recover after working out, you know, it helps with muscle recovery, it's really great for sleep. Um, it's also really great if you need to detox from mold, heavy metals, I mean all sorts of stuff. They are really, really beneficial. In addition to the fact that near infrared saunas are a much deeper detox, the bulbs that I'm using in near infrared specifically is really great because it's much lower EMF. A lot of people are really sensitive to EMFs and so this sauna that I'm building is really great because it is really low EMF and also it doesn't heat up the space around it so you're not spending a bunch of extra money on air conditioning or cooling down the room or worrying you know about the space around it getting too hot it really keeps everything confined to the tent which is really really nice that is kind of an overview of near infrared saunas versus other options out there you know why i am choosing to make one and yeah i think that we should just get started to get started building your infrared sauna, here's what you will need. You'll need one tent, you'll need four bulbs, four clamps for the bulbs, and one shoe rack. All of the specifics to these are linked down below. In addition, inside the sauna, you'll also need a wooden stool to sit on, a towel, you know, for all that sweat, a head cap, and goggles to make sure that you're protecting your brain and your eyes while in the sauna you'll also need an extension cord to plug everything in. So the first step to this process is to assemble the tent. You'll start by taking everything out and laying out the framework. There are a lot of pipes here, <laughs> lots of little connecting joints, but this is honestly a really simple process. Um, I was definitely pleasantly surprised by how easy this was to set up. I organized the poles by number, but you honestly don't really need to because it's pretty straightforward. Once they're all connected, you just get the bottom framework, build up, and that's pretty much it. So from there comes the tricky bit, which is putting the cover on. If you can, I really recommend laying this out as much as possible because it's honestly really hard to figure it out when it's all in one pile and it's just hard to know what goes where. If you can, definitely get somebody to help with this part of the process because it's a lot to do on your own. There's a nice little bottom sheet that you can Velcro around so that all of the pipes on the bottom are covered and from there you can just kind of drape everything down zip it up and you're set so now comes step number two which is assembling the shoe rack and this is what the bulbs will be clamped to inside the sauna
This really wasn't a hard process. It was just super tedious. So again, get help if you can because you basically just have to screw each rung into the frames on both sides and then latch on the top half and repeat. Pretty straightforward. I had help and a cute dog to keep me company, so it wasn't too bad. The process didn't take too long. Step three is to grab the clamps. Step four, the bulbs. So all you need to do here is to screw in the bulbs and you want to take off the little rubber pieces that come on the little like clamp bulb cover. And so once you take those off, screw the bulb in pop the little prongs into place and then just reattach the rubber pieces so nothing pops out. So I angled them accordingly to when I sat down on the stool. I just angled them so they were all facing me properly. So again, that'll be a bit different for you, but pretty straightforward. So then all you're gonna do is put your stool in there, your towel, whatever else you need, attach the extension cord and plug it in. <laughs> And there you have it, your very own infrared sauna. Whew. Okay, so we just built the sauna, um, as you saw, and that tent, oh my god. I think that it was probably a lot easier than we were making it out to be, but my advice is really just to Try to lay it out as much as you can in the space that you have um, before just flinging things on top of the <laughs> frame and everything because that was kind of a mess um, and I don't think that it needed to be. The other thing that I didn't show on camera is that to have more space when we were filming, I filmed it on the second floor of our place, but it's actually going in our guest bathroom and we had measured this and everything was looking great. So we built, you know, filmed, built the sauna, and then it slid perfectly into the guest bathroom. But then we realized we couldn't close the door. And the door sticking out messed up the measurements for how much space there was to, to get past it. So we basically ended up having to deconstruct it while holding it up in the bathroom and then reconstructing it. It was a whole thing. So. If you are assembling it in a place that it isn't going to live, just be mindful and like double check your measurements and see if doors are gonna get in your way or anything like that because that was so sweaty. As I mentioned before, I use it for detox. So I'll basically do a dry brush and then an Ayurvedic oil massage called Abhyanga and then go into the sauna for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, how long that you stay in there is really uh, up to you and you know what you are in there for and then I will shower so that I can wash off all the oils and also wash off all of the toxins because you're sweating and sweating is such a powerful detox modality that you don't want to then reabsorb anything that your sweat might be releasing from your body. So the other thing that's really important to do after you have a sauna session is to replenish your electrolytes. This is crucial um, hydration is so so important but a lot of times just plain water doesn't have all of the minerals that we need so having things like coconut water juices um, you can do some salt and honey you can do bone broth you can do electrolyte drinks anything like that really really try to have that after your sauna session so you can flood your body with really good nutrients when you're done so that was the sauna process. Um, I hope that it was really helpful. I hope that it inspires you to see that it's really not that hard to make your own sauna. You don't need to spend, I mean, oh my gosh, what, like six times as much at least 
to build one. So I will link everything that I used down below. And I really hope that this inspires you to make your own sauna. And if you do, please um, message me or comment or tag me on Instagram and I would love to see. But if you have any other questions about detox or saunas or anything else, feel free to let me know. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.